Welcome back, welcome back, any and all. Glad you all could come back to hear the word. Not only hear the word, but be doers of the word. Glory be to a higher. I sure hope when you woke up this morning, you told Father God, thank you. It is he that woke us up. We didn't wake ourselves up. No, we can't do that. We can't even breathe on our own, believe it or not. And I sure hope you told your loved ones that you love them. When I promise tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Today, we're still in the book of John. We're on chapter 6. Feeding 5,000. And that's Jesus doing that, right? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I sure hope you told your loved ones that you love them. I sure hope that all of you have been baptized down in water. You've given your life over to Jesus Christ. And that uh, you're walking in holiness. You're seeking the Lord every day. You're seeking the kingdom of the high and all its righteousness. So all other things be added there too. We know that those only those that endure to the end shall be saved. You must read God's word daily. The Bible preferably the King James Version. Go down on your knees in prayer and cry out to the Father in sincerity and truth. Don't stop crying out to him till you hear from him. He knows your heart. He will answer. He may not answer right away, but he will answer. Not only that, he'll teach you the word of God. He teach me. He's continuously teaching me. Hallelujah. He taught me and he's continually teaching me. He that has begun a good work will not stop until the day of Christ coming. And I hope you're living a daily life of repentance because we live in these fleshly bodies and the flesh is always warring with the spirit. With the spirit. Hey, listen. In case if you don't know, the second exodus, the worldwide second exodus is at hand. That'll come before the sixth seal, which is when Jesus will burst the clouds and he'll come for those that are his. But that's not the time as yet. The, the worldwide second exodus is at hand. And I pray that all of you are awakened to know who you are. And if you are from the 12 scattered tribes of Yasha El and also your believes in Christ Jesus, walking with him, truly love him, the church, we're going to be ready. You want to be ready because we are living in the last days and the second exodus is at the door. If you don't know who you are, you won't know to be ready. Please get into God's word. And read and hear from him what he has to say to you about the second exodus. Or go in prayer and ask him. Because we want to be ready. We want to be counted worthy to make it in to the second exodus. It's a worldwide event and it's going to happen. And um, we pray to God that we be counted worthy to make it into the second exodus. And Father, please write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, at all costs, I want to be wor found worthy to make it in the second exodus. This world is going to be hellified. You think it's hell? You think you, you're having problems now? This place is going to be hellified when the Lord is no longer here. When the second exodus comes and he removes the church. I'm telling you, don't want to be here. Do not be left behind. With that being said, we're going to now say a prayer for children of all ages. I always tell you the truth because I love you. And Father God loves you more. Please take heed. Don't don't despise prophecy because that was a prophecy that was revealed by a sister in Christ uh, and, and others. So I'm just telling you, please, don't despise prophecy. Fine, go to the Father in prayer. Because you're supposed to be testing the Spirit anyway by the Spirit to know if it's of the Most High. We're going to say a prayer now for children of all ages and we're going to go right into our reading. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you today to say thank you. Thank you, my Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, for every day. Thank you, Father, for giving us parents that train us up by your word. And thank you, Father, for teaching us to treat others the way that we want to be treated with love and respect. We love you, my Father. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Amen indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us go into our reading. John chapter 6, feeding 5,000. Jesus crossed Lake Galilee, which was also known as Lake Tiberias. A large crowd had seen him work miracles to heal the sick, and those people went with him. It was almost time for the Jewish festival of Passover, and Jesus went up on a mountain with his disciples and sat down. When Jesus saw the large crowd coming toward him, he asked Philip, Where will we get enough food to feed all these people? He said this to test Philip since he already knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, Don't you know that it would take 
almost a year's wages just to buy only a little bread for each of these people? Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the disciples. He spoke up and said, There is a boy here who has five small loaves, a barley bread, and two fish. But what good is that with all these people? The ground was covered with grass, and Jesus told his disciples to have everyone sit down. About 5,000 men were in the crowd. Jesus took the bread in his hands and gave thanks to God. Then he passed the bread to the people, and he did the same with the fish until everyone had plenty to eat. The people ate all they wanted, and Jesus told his disciples to gather up the leftovers so that nothing would be wasted. The disciples gathered them up and filled twelve large baskets with what was left over from the five barley loaves. After the people had seen Jesus work this miracle, they began saying, This must be the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus realized that they would try to force him to be their king, so he went up on a mountain where he could be alone. Jesus walks on the water. That evening, Jesus' disciples went down to the lake. They got into a boat and started across for Capernaum. Later that evening, Jesus had still not come to them, and a strong wind was making the water rough. When the disciples had rowed for three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the water. He kept coming closer to the boat, and they were terrified. But he said, I am Jesus. Don't be afraid. The disciples wanted to take him into the boat, but suddenly the boat reached the shore where they were headed. The bread that gives life. The people who had stayed on the east side of the lake knew that only one boat had been there. They also knew that Jesus had not left in it with his disciples. But the next day, some boats from Tiberias sailed near the place where the crowd had eaten the bread for which the Lord had given thanks. They saw that Jesus and his disciples had left. Then they got into the boats and went to Capernaum to look for Jesus. They found him on the west side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I tell you for certain that you are not looking for me because you saw the miracles, but because you ate all the food you wanted. Don't work for food that spoils. Work for, work for food that gives eternal life. The Son of Man will give you this food because God the Father has given him the right to do so. What exactly does God want us to do? The people asked. Jesus answered, God wants you to have faith in the one he sent. They replied, what miracle will you work so that we can have faith in you? What will you do? For example, when our ancestors were in the desert, they were given manna to eat. It happened just as the scriptures say, God gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then told them, I tell you for certain that Moses wasn't the one who gave you the bread from heaven. My father is the one who gives you the bread, the true bread from heaven. And the bread that God gives is the one who came down from heaven to give life to the world. The people said, Lord, give us this bread and don't ever stop. Jesus replied, I am the bread that gives life. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry. No one who has faith in me will ever be thirsty. I have told you already that you have seen me and still do not have faith in me. Everything and everyone that the Father has given me will come to me, and I won't turn any of them away. I didn't come from heaven to do what I want. I came to do what the Father wants me to do. He sent me, and he wants to make certain that none of the ones he has given me will be lost. Instead, he wants me to raise them to life on the last day. My Father wants everyone who sees a son to have faith in him and to have eternal life. Then I will raise him, raise them to life on the last day. The people started grumbling because Jesus had said he was the bread that had come down from heaven. They were asking each other, isn't, the, isn't he Jesus, the son of Joseph? Don't we know his father and mother? How can he say that he has come down from heaven? Jesus told them, stop grumbling. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me makes them want to come. But if they do come, I will raise them to life on the last day. One of the prophets wrote, God will teach all of them. And so everyone who listens to the father and learns from him will come to me. The only one who has not, the only one who has seen the father is the one who has come from him. 
No one else has ever seen the Father. I tell you for certain that everyone who has faith in me has eternal life. I am the bread that gives life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, and later they died. But the bread from heaven has come down, so that no one who eats, will, who, no one who eats it will ever die. I am that bread from heaven. Everyone who eats it will live forever. My flesh is the living, is the life living. You heard me say it again. My flesh is the life giving bread that I give to the people of this world. They started arguing with each other and asked, How can he give us his flesh to eat? Jesus answered, I tell you for certain that you won't live unless you eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of Man. But if you do eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will have eternal life, and I will raise you to life on the last day. My flesh is the true food, and my blood is the true drink. If you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you are one with me, and I am one with you. The living Father sent me, and I have life because of him. Now everyone who eats my flesh will live because of me. The bread that comes down from heaven isn't like what your ancestors ate. They died, but whosoever eats this bread will live forever. Jesus was teaching in a Jewish place of worship in Capernaum when he said these things. The words of eternal life. Many of Jesus' disciples heard him and said, This is too hard for anyone to understand. Jesus knew that his disciples were, gr uh, were grumbling, so he asked, Does this bother you? What if you should see the Son of Man go up to heaven where he came from? The Spirit is the one who gives life. Human strength can do nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are from that life-giving Spirit. But some of you refuse to have faith in me. Jesus said this because from the beginning he knew who would have faith in him. He also knew which one would betray him. Then Jesus said, You cannot come to me unless the Father makes you want to come. That is why I have told you these things to all of you. Because of what Jesus said, many of his disciples turned their backs on him and stopped following him. Jesus then asked his twelve disciples if they were going to leave him. Simon Peter answered, Lord, there is no one else that we can go to. Your words give eternal life. We have faith in you, and we are sure that you are God's holy one. Jesus told his disciples, I chose all twelve of you, but one of you is a demon. Jesus was talking about Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. He would later betray Jesus, even though he was one of the twelve disciples. God's woman tomorrow will still come back, still in the book of John, chapter 7. Jesus' brothers don't have faith in him. You all tell your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Tell them all about Father God who gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all our sins. He didn't die for one or some. He died for us all. And if you haven't given your life to him, what are you waiting for? Choose ye this day whom you are going to serve. Father God says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that's not something up for debate. And love your neighbor as yourself. That's not something up for debate or discussion. It's something we all must do. So please do it. And if you have any oughts or any unforgiveness in your heart, please forgive. I don't care who he or she is or what they've done. If you want your Father who art in heaven to forgive you for your sins and your transgressions, then you must forgive your fellow man. I love you all with the love of the Lord. That's why I tell you the truth. And Father God loves you more. You will have yourself a beautiful, blessed day. Children of all ages, from youngest to oldest alike, God bless you. Bye-bye.